Hi, in this video, I'm going to discuss about one of the experiment in the heat transfer lab, that is heat transfer by natural convection. Convection is one of the three modes of heat transfer that relates to heat transfer in fluids. As the convection heat transfer involves the bulk movement of fluid particles based on the source of fluid particle movement, convection is further classified into natural convection and forced convection. When the bulk movement of fluid particles during the heat transfer is due to the external force, it is called as forced convection. And when the movement of the particles are due to buoyancy difference between the hot and cold particle, it is termed as natural convection. This can be further understood by this schematic. When a potential is applied across a heater rod, the fluid particles that are near the heater rod will get the heat energy from the heater rod and become warmer. These warmer fluid particles start rising up and the colder, denser particle starts moving down. This particular movement of cold and warm particle is due to the density difference that created by the temperature difference. In this particular experiment, we are going to calculate the heat transfer coefficient by experimental as well as empirical method. Unlike thermal conductivity in conductive heat transfer rate equation, this heat transfer coefficient depends on the fluid property, the flow behavior that is either laminar or turbulent as well as the nature of the flow area. Hence, heat transfer coefficient has to be calculated either by experimental way or by empirical way. That brings the necessity in comparing the heat transfer coefficient that is obtained by empirical and experimental way for a given process. In this experiment, there are three objectives. One is to find the experimental heat transfer coefficient. Second is to find the variation of heat transfer coefficient across the length of the heater rod. Third one is to find the empirical heat transfer coefficient for the similar experimental conditions. This is the apparatus to experiment the natural convection phenomena. In this chamber, you can see the metal rod fixed inside and it is fitted with multiple thermocouples to monitor the temperature. The other parts of the experimental setup can be explored while we doing the experiment. The heater rod which is in the chamber is of length 400 mm and the diameter 32 mm. The power input to the metal rod is given by adjusting this voltage and so the current. The product of the voltage and current gives us the power input. To find the surface area of the heater rod, we can use the diameter and length of the heater rod and we can calculate the area available for the heat transfer. In a typical experiment, after giving the power input, the heater rod will start getting heated. After some time of heating, the heater rod will come to a steady state temperature. To identify whether the system has attained a steady state, we have to take readings. So we made a tabular column which has time and to measure all the six thermocouples reading. The metal rod is fitted with five thermocouples to measure the temperature and the thermocouple six is given to find the ambient temperature. After immediately giving the potential across the metal rod, the readings of the thermocouple have to be taken. By rotating this knob, we can see the thermocouple reading in this particular digital display. After giving the voltage, we have to consider the time as zero and we have to take the thermocouple's readings. Then with every five minute, we have to verify whether the system attains steady state by taking the reading of thermocouple. We can see that the fifth minute, the temperatures keep on rising. And in 10th minute also, we can see uh, the temperature of the each thermocouple is rising. We have to wait till the thermocouple readings are not much changing. That means it reached the steady state. Now we can see here the thermocouple readings in the 10th minute and 15th minute is almost same. That indicates the system attained the steady state. As the thermocouple T1 to T5 is fitted on the metal rod, the average of these five thermocouple readings can be taken as surface temperature of the rod mentioned as Ts, that is 34.6 degrees Celsius in this case. And the T6, which is the ambient temperature, which is 27 degrees Celsius. Now we have listed what are the experimental data we have collected so that we can proceed with the further calculations. The convective heat transfer rate can be given by this Newton law of cooling equation where Q is equal to HEA delta T. The delta T stands for temperature difference between the surface temperature of the metal rod and the ambient temperature. The rate of heat input can be calculated by multiplying the voltage and current. 
as we are interested in calculating the heat transfer coefficient we have to rearrange the equation in terms of h now we have the all the terms in this equation so we can substitute here to calculate the experimental heat transfer coefficient that comes to be 42.43 watt per meter square degree celsius now the second objective is to calculate the heat transfer coefficient across the length of the heater rod each thermocouple is fitted at different length from the beginning of the heater rod in the rearranged convective heat transfer rate equation we can vary the length and we can calculate the heat transfer coefficient using this formula the t6 will be the steady state ambient temperature and ti will be the steady state temperature of the corresponding thermocouple at different length locations now from the experiment conducted we have to fill the table with the respective steady state temperature once we filled we have to calculate the heat transfer coefficient at different location using this equation the location of l the length l alone be varied and corresponding thermocouple temperature has to be used to calculate the corresponding heat transfer coefficient accordingly we can calculate all the heat transfer coefficients at various location this can be plotted where length of the heater rod in the x axis and the calculated heat transfer coefficient in the y axis we can get a graph now the third objective for this particular experiment is to calculate the empirical heat transfer coefficient the empirical relation for the free convection in a vertical heat cylinder is given here to identify the suitable equation for the present experimental conditions we have to calculate the product of grashof number and prandtl number based on the product value of grashof and prandtl number we have to choose any one among these two equations for the present experimental conditions the grashof number and prandtl number is given by this particular formula to calculate the grashof number and prandtl number we need to know the properties of the air like specific heat capacity thermal conductivity density and viscosity of the air at the film temperature the data sheet for identifying the viscosity density and other properties are given in this video now we need to know the film temperature to identify these properties from the table the film temperature can be given by the average of surface temperature of the rod and the ambient temperature from the table sheet we can identify at the temperature of 30.8 degree celsius corresponding properties of the air once we identify the properties we can proceed with the further calculations as we have all the required data for calculating grashof number we can substitute in the given formula and we can calculate the grashof number as from the data sheet we can directly get the prandtl number we don't need to calculate the prandtl number separately now as we mentioned in the previous slide we have to identify which equation is suitable for calculating nusselt number in our case so the product of prandtl number and grashof number in our experiment is comes to be 4.3 into 10 power 8 which comes in the category of the first equation so we can use the first equation itself for nusselt number calculation once we calculated the nusselt number we can calculate the empirical heat transfer coefficient from that as we already have all the values for this equation let's substitute and we can calculate the nusselt number which comes around 84.96 the calculated nusselt number can be substituted in this equation and the empirical heat transfer coefficient can be calculated thus the three objective of the natural convection experiment has been achieved now you can see here the empirical heat transfer coefficient is much smaller than the experimental heat transfer coefficient thank you